Hello YouTube and welcome to the first in what's going to be a series of videos where I break down layer by layer how I created an image in Photoshop. I hope that you find it informative and that it inspires you in your own work. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this video and if you enjoy it, please don't forget to like and subscribe. As always, thanks for watching. Now let's get started. Okay, here we are inside of Photoshop. You can see over here in the layers panel all the layers I used to create this image. It looks like a lot, but uh, we're going to go through each one one by one, but it's really not that bad. There's nothing too complicated in here, so this shouldn't take too long. So the first thing I did was create a background, and I did that with just two layers, some clouds and a mountain range. So here are the clouds, and here are the mountains. And Obviously, I went through and selected out the sky and got rid of that so that we just had the mountains. And I knew I wanted this to be blurred so that the deer was in focus and you didn't have a distracting background. So I just went and added a field blur after turning these into smart objects in case I wanted to go back later and change the amount of blur. So that's the amount of blur I added. And I knew I wanted this to be a nighttime scene, so I added this color lookup adjustment layer that comes built into Photoshop called Night from Day. You would just come into your adjustments, go to color lookup, and it would be in here. I have hundreds of lookup tables that I've added over the years, and that one's towards the bottom because I don't use it very often. So I'm not going to be able to get to it right now, but that's where it would be is in there. And I just clipped that to the background layer or the background group. I didn't need to because there's nothing behind the background that this could affect, but it's just a habit. I went ahead and clipped that to it. And the next thing I did was just add a little fog here at the bottom. That'll end up being behind the deer. And here's the actual deer itself. Oh, wrong button. So I was lucky enough to find this image online. It was perfect because the deer is looking right into the camera, dead center, and the background is really, really blurry, which will make it pretty easy to select. And to do that, all I did was, you just grab one of these three brushes, or one of these three tools, either the quick selection tool, the magic wand tool, or the object selection tool. It has to be one of these three in order for the select subject option to show up here. And this is a really easy way to get a good base selection. And as you can see, it did a pretty good job. It missed a few spots, like right here in between the ear and the antlers, up here, this little area. So to fix that, we would just go into Select and Mask. Use this first brush, which is called the Refine Edge, yeah. So I'm just going to do this real quickly. You can go in and you can zoom in and spend all the time you want making this look really good. But you just kind of select these areas that it missed. Okay, that's pretty good. Click OK. And then just add a mask and you'll have the subject selected from the background. That's the easiest way to do it for me. Now, of course, we want this deer to be dark as well so that it blends in with the nighttime scene. So I just added the same night from day lookup table to it and clipped it to it. And this time the clipping does make a difference because if it's not clipped, it affects the background as well and the background already has this adjustment added to it and this just makes it too dark so we're going to clip it just to the deer now the next thing i did was add a black and white adjustment layer and clip that to the deer because i felt like the deer had a little too much color in it left over from the sun reflecting off of it in the original image this just kind of makes it look a little more like this was actually taken at night now the next thing is I knew that I was going to be putting the moon behind the antlers here. And that's going to create highlights all around the edges of the deer. And that's I'm going to show you how I did that in the next subject. But the first thing 
is that would create a, a bit of shadow here on the front of the deer. So in order to do that, I uh, created two curves adjustments. That one just kind of filled in a little spot there. And here's, okay, so I created a curves adjustment, pulled down the curve just a little bit, and then painted in just where I wanted it to show up here on the front. And then, yeah, just add a little bit more right here. And then clip both of those, of course, to the deer later so they didn't affect anything else. And then next, I create a blank layer, use the same fog brush as before, and just put a little fog in front of the deer to create some, a little bit of ambiance. Now the highlights are where this image is really gonna come alive. So the first thing I do when I'm doing my highlights is make sure that I know where my light source is gonna be exactly. And then if I can, go ahead and add it in there so I have it as a reference point. So here I just created a blank layer and then I used this brush right here, Cloud Moon. I'll just kind of show you what that does. You see, this makes a nice little, it looks like a, a, a moon with some clouds in front of it and the light from the moon is reflecting off of the clouds. And it's just a really good brush for nighttime scenes like this. And then of course I masked out I didn't want it to go over the top of the deer's antlers, so I just used the mask I had created before down here. Oops. Just selected it and then added a mask on here, and that way you don't see it on the antlers. Okay, now the highlights. So I have two that I two layers that I created in here, one for the body and one for the antlers. There's the body. So what I did was just, I used a uh, charcoal brush. I thought a charcoal brush would look better than the default brush just because it has a little texture in it and that that would look really good on the, on the fur. But you can use, uh, there's just an infinite number of kinds of brushes you could use to do this. I just, I just happened to go with the charcoal one. I like the way it looks, but that's, there you go. You can see that. And then here's the antlers. Next, I did a little bit of toning. This is one that I use in a lot of images. This is an action called Ethereal. This is part of, oops, that's too high. 19% is where I had that. Um, right, so this is an action that comes with the Lord Jade Studio Editorial Collection. This is just a bunch of actions that she's created that I, they're really great. I use Silver Eyes and Ethereal a lot in images. And what Ethereal does is uh, you run this action here and it creates a group of adjustment layers that all add up to the effect, which as you can see is, it gives that vintagey faded look to images with blue and purple in the shadows. And I just ran that one and put it down to 19%. Added a couple more lookup table adjustments. These are not ones that Kim built in. These are some that I've downloaded at some point. Uh, and then this last one here is, so what this is, is this is a, a group created by the infinite color panel. Now what you do is you just hit create on this and it just creates random effects and you just keep clicking until you find something you like and the good thing is is just like the action earlier it creates a whole bunch of adjustment layers and you can go in and adjust each one of these to change the effect uh, however you like it or you can come in here and randomize each of the different adjustments and just keep going through until you find something you like there as well so once I found one that I liked I just kept that. All right. And then next thing is the glowing eyes. Now, the way I did this is I have an action that I created, but I, uh, I'll kind of walk you through what this is. So you create a group and you put it on the screen blending mode. You start with a black layer, which you're not going to see. It's just an under layer. It's required for this effect to work. But like I said, because you're on the screen blending mode, you're not going to see it. And then you create a gradient map 
and you want to create five points going from black to white. You don't have to select these colors. These are just the ones that I selected as my defaults, but you can have it, you can have it go, you can use any color you want basically, because you're going to change it with hue saturation anyway. So the way this works is you use a white brush. I'm just going to use a default brush here. Put this on a low flow, let's say 10%. And you just kind of build this, oops, that's too much. It needs to be soft. Let's lower this to five. It's still too much. There you go. So you can just kind of build it up like this and then switch to black and erase where you want. Anyway, really cool. And then you can just use this hue saturation here to change the color, turn the saturation all the way up and slide the hue slider to wherever you want. Now this is going to be a demon here, so I'm going to keep it at red. Now to add to the realism, created a blank layer and used the same charcoal brush to kind of just, I uh, sampled the red color here and then just painted some highlights on the fur where I thought this red glow would be reflecting. And then here I just used a brighter color and painted some extra highlight just around the base of the eyes where it, the glow is the uh, brightest. And then used just kind of a fog brush and just added a little glow around the eyes just a little bit more. And that's it for the eyes. Oh wait, no, I added, I used a dust brush to just kind of add some dust particles around the eyes to give it a little more, a little more realism. And next is, because this is a demon deer, I assumed that it would be a very hot deer in a cold night, so steam would be rising up off of it. So to create that effect, I just made a little, just used a soft white brush and just kind of painted a little glow around the areas that uh, have the moon highlight reflected on it. Used the dust brush to add a little bit of dust for the same effect as on the eyes, just for some realism. And then a smoke brush. You can also use a cloud brush or a haze or mist or any kind of brush like that to just kind of create some steam coming off. And then here I just added a little red hue into that steam where it would be reflecting this red light from the eyes. And then the last thing I did was create a stamp visible layer and go to the camera raw filter. Let's turn that on. And I just brought up the clarity slider, the texture, and the shadows and the blacks, just to kind of give it a little bit of an HDR effect. And just moved that down to 60% and erased it on a mask around the edges. Just, I liked how that looked a little better. That's before masking and after. And there you go. That's how I created this image. I hope you found this breakdown helpful and thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, let me know in the comments and please don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps me out a ton. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.